Good morning, students. Mr. Gemini making a quick video for this evening's evening practice. I used the word evening back to back there. Uh, today we talked about solving equations with rational numbers, which will then transfer or provide the foundation to tomorrow's lesson, which we're solving inequalities with rational numbers. So take a look at a couple. There are six problems here. I'm not going to do all six. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll make this offer out if you do the ones I don't do, I will give you maybe a little extra credit or something like that. You bring them in and we'll check your work and make sure it's correct. So taking a look at, let's do number seven. I'm going to rewrite it down here. It says seven and two tenths equals negative nine tenths times y. Well, I want to evaluate for one y, not nine tenths of a y. So this says to multiply by negative nine tenths well I'm going to do the inverse which is to divide by negative nine tenths now I see over here that I'm dividing a positive by a negative so that should clue you in that immediately your answer is going to be negative so alright y equals down here it's a negative number uh, let's take a look I'm gonna transfer this over here so we have seven and two tenths divided by nine tenths I know the answer is going to be negative so I'm not going to worry about this right now now we talked about this. You cannot have a decimal, or you don't want to have a decimal. You can, but you don't want to have a decimal in your divisor. So I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom by 10. So that would move that decimal place one place over. It also moved the one place over here. So now instead of really dividing 7 and 2 tenths, I'm dividing 72 by 9. And I think we all know that equals 8. And again, I have a positive divided by a negative, which will give me a negative answer. It'll be negative 8. If I wanted to check this work, which is always a great idea, I am then going to substitute it back into the original equation. So now I know that y is equal to negative 8. I could then say, hey, negative 9 tenths times 8. Because remember, I'm solving the original equation now, not this 72 divided by 9. Uh, that gives me a 72. Move my 7 up here. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 7 ones is 7. Move our t uh, place. There you go. And it's negative. Or be a positive because these are both negative. Sorry. So that would give you a positive 72 hundredths, which is the correct answer. Uh, that's a way to check it. So I would say up here that y is equal to. Now it's not equal to 72 hundredths. It is equal to negative 8. All right. Uh, let's take a look at another one real quick. Let me erase this work so I have some room to do another one. There we are. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this one. It says k minus k minus four and five thousandths. K minus four and five thousandths is equal to six and two tenths. Okay, I need to isolate this k. I cannot. This this equation cannot be simplified anymore. Uh, all, the, all like terms are combined so I'm going to to get rid of this negative or to get rid of this 4 and 5 tenths I need to add 4 and 5 tenths of both sides remember an equation whatever I do to the one side I must do to the other uh, always tricky here I have to line up my place values and decimal point okay so my place values are in line my ones place my tenths place hundreds place I can put a zero here to hold that place value uh, and now I just have left on this left side of the equation k. k is equal to, let's see here, starting in the hundredths place, that is 5. Tenths place, that is 2. 6 plus 4 is 10. I have solved that k is equal to 2 and 25 hundredths. I can substitute that in to make sure. Let me scroll that up. So now I say 10 and 25 hundredths hopefully equals, when I subtract from it, 4 and 5 hundredths, hopefully that equals 6 and two tenths. Zero, two, I really have ten minus four which is six. And that checks that so I am good. So I can go up here and say hey you know what? K does indeed equal ten and twenty-five hundredths. Okay uh, let's take a look at one of the bottom ones and I don't really want to focus on number ten Let's focus on, let's see here, I'm going to scroll this up so I have some more room down here. Um, let's take a look at number 11. Uh, I'm going to rewrite the, I'm going to rewrite it down here, just so I have some more room to operate. 
1 fourth of x is equal to a half. So I'm taking a fourth of something, and whatever I'm taking a fourth of, that's equal to 1 half. Now this says 1 fourth times x. Well, I really want to divide by 1 fourth, or remember when we're dividing fractions, we're actually multiplying by its reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of 1 fourth is 4 over 1. And I do that, I see cross products cancel out, so I'm really just left with x over here, or 1x. And that is equal to, okay, whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do the other. I'm going to multiply the other side by 4 over 1. Now again, I like to do this. It makes it easier for me. It avoids the simplifying process sometimes. I see that 2 and 4 are the cross factors here. Cross and numerator and denominator have a common factor, and that is 2. Two, oops, 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 4 twice. So I'm left with 1 times 2 gives me 2. 1 times 1 gives me 1. This can then be converted to 2. My answer then is y is equal to 2. And if you think about it, a fourth of it. So I have 4. 4 halves. A half and a half is 1, plus another half is 1 and a half, plus another half is 2. So again, if I substitute in 1 fourth times 2, and I'm going to make 2 as a fraction, 2 over 1 is hopefully equal to 1 half. 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 equals 1 half, or 2 fourths equals 1 half. This can be reduced to 1 half is equal to 1 half, so that is a check. All right, uh, again, uh, you're more than welcome to, if you want to try a couple of these, you, I've, done, I've, left three, I've done three for you, modeled three for you. Uh, I have left three blank for you. If you want to do all three, I could possibly give you three bonus points. All right, take care. Have a great day. Bye.